The very base impulse started from wanting to explore a dye process that I've never worked with. That really was the concept at the beginning. And then what is so beautiful about sort of creative development is that the concept you start with isn't always the concept you end with. And that is my favorite part because you kind of remain open through the process. And if I had sort of gone in thinking, I know exactly what I want this to look like and I'm gonna to stick to that, I wouldn't have been open to some of these accidental discoveries that we had during the dying, during the development that I think in the end brought a stronger concept together and a more interesting one. When I'm designing a new yarn, I'm always thinking about something that gets me excited first, then bringing the second layer of questions, what are additional things to consider knowing that I have very specific tastes as well. So for the, the dyeing process of tones, we did something that we have not done before. We did what's called over dyeing. So we combined the dye processes that we use in our other yarns together, which was a lot of fun to play with. For our heathered yarns, like Shelter Loft and Cory, we actually dye the wool before the yarn is spun and then blend various base colors together to create the yarn, which allows us to get those great complex colors because some of them we're using, you know, four, five, six different base colors in there. So you get all that beautiful complexity. And then with our skein dyed yarns, Arbor, Peary, we're taking white wool, spinning it into yarn and then dyeing it into solid colors. With tones, we're combining the two processes. We're taking natural white wool, then dyeing part of it black, and then blending that together to create two base colors a lighter gray and a darker gray. Then we take those two beautiful heathered grays, which are gorgeous by themselves, um, and then taking the pair of those and then dyeing it into a single dye bath of a gorgeous bright color. So when those two base colors come out of that dye bath, you get that one dye color with a bright expression which we call an overtone, and then a darker, more subtle expression that we're calling an undertone over those two base colors. So it gives you this gorgeous palette where every color comes in a light and a dark. So the opportunities for playing with color are just endless. With tones, what I loved about the end result is that we never had to make that call between, oh, do we go with the brighter color or do we go with the more subdued color, which is often a very difficult question when we're paring down. And so one of the biggest challenges that I always have being such a color lover is trimming it down. Is I usually start with some big, ambitious, beautiful, not possible thing like, here's 60 colors that would be amazing together, but we're making a palette that is 12 colors. And so getting from that big number to the small number can sometimes feel like a quite agonizing experience. So this was a really fun kind of cheat of that process because while we did have to, ch to, to rein it into a smaller number of colors, we actually got twice as many colors in the finished yarn as we did from the colors that we were dyeing. Because for every color, you're getting a pair. As a color lover, I am very excited about Toad. The first time we really got to see the yarn in the office was when the lab dips started to come in from the dye house. So just these tiny little hanks of yarn that they tested the dyes on. Um, but seeing them all lined up together and seeing the, the bright overtones and then the darker undertones all together laid out was when we all really started to get excited about the yarn. One of the things that really surprised me about knitting with tones for the first time is how soft and sp squishy the Columbia wool is that we use. It's, for me, it's definitely gonna be a next to skin wear yarn. It's so springy with that three ply construction. 
Um, so it was just really a pleasure to, to knit with it and start feeling how that fabric is gonna work up. With the woolen spun construction, it's very light and lofty. It has a little bit of a fuzziness to it, so you're gonna get a really plush, yummy fabric. It, I see this yarn as being possible because of the other yarns we've made in the past and because of the other U.S. manufacturing relationships that we had been building over many, many years making other products. And so this is a yarn process that is unique and required a, a larger number of players to make it happen. There is a bit of... Um, there is a bit of this project that is also tied to sort of the stage that we're at in our own business journey and in our own um, exploration of what can we make in the U.S., what, are, what, what is possible in terms of textile manufacturing, yarn manufacturing, given the limited number of manufacturing resources that we have available to us in the U.S. It's a really round, springy, three-ply construction that lends itself to Great stitch definition for textured fabrics, cabled fabrics. It's a beautiful yarn for sweaters, really plush, plush finished fabric that has a little bit of a slight fuzzy halo to it, gives that coziness. And then you get the overdyed heathered look too, which has a really traditional feel to it, but we've chosen really bright, fun, modern colors to kind of combine with that look. So I think it's a really beautiful, interesting yarn.